Thank you so much. Um, my name is Dina Jenkins. I'm part of the leadership team for Night to Shine. I'm also um, here on staff at West Stark in one of our um, ministry teams. Uh, but Jordan Brown, who is also, um, he's in the booth, or balcony, I guess is what we call it. <laughs> Jordan is one of our team leaders, and then you probably saw Meredith on your way in at the registration, people, at the registration table. Um, we kind of are the coordinators, I guess, or whatever, but we just depend on, we just delegate to all of the 300 or so of you guys. So we are very, very grateful you are here. Um, a lot of you may know that Night to Shine is a function of uh, the Tim Tebow Foundation, if you've ever heard of that guy. Um, so he always likes to start these uh, training. Night to Shine team, what's up guys? Thank you so much for being part of this. Thank you so much for saying yes to volunteering for A Night to Shine. This year we're gonna have over 500 churches, over 16 countries, over 175,000 volunteers. But the best part is we get to celebrate over 90,000 kings and queens of the prom. Every single one of these kings and queens, they are worth it. But we get to do this because of you. Because you answering the call, you saying yes. At the end of the night, hopefully they walk away knowing that they were worth every bit of it. They were worth every bit of it because the God of this universe loves them so much. And he has a special plan and purpose for every single one of them. I also want to read one of the quotes from last year's Night to Shine. You could feel the Holy Spirit all night. So much love and unity. No one cared what church you went to, what denomination you were part of. We were there to honor Jesus and celebrate our guests. Lives are going to be changed. People will be loved, and it's going to be an amazing night. Thank you for saying yes. God bless you guys. All right, I don't know if you've ever heard the story behind why Tim Tebow is, and why he did this to begin with, but if you haven't, I would encourage you to go to their website um, and, and hear that story. It's very moving. Uh, but it has become really special to us here at the West Ark family, and then, of course, the, you know, to have all of the community and so many different organizations and individuals involved is just an enormous blessing to us. So we are very, very grateful you guys are here. You're the ones who will make this happen. So we would like to know um, how many of you, I asked one person, but how many of you guys were here last year? Just show of hands. Oh, wow, for this group, we're more new ones than not. That's awesome. So by default, the rest of you guys have not. See, I'm in it a little bit on this Saturday afternoon. So anyway, we are so grateful that all of you guys are here, and we hope and pray that this will be an amazing experience for you, um, and especially for our guests. The guests that we have will be called kings and queens, as you um, uh, heard and saw in the video, and we want them to be treated exactly as such. We want them to be treated as royalty. Uh, first and foremost, to know that they are loved by God and loved by us more than they could ever imagine. And then also, um, just because they don't typically get that treatment. You know, often this is a sector of our society, a population in our society that is overlooked at best and sometimes mistreated. So we want this night to be an incredibly special night for them, for each of them, and for their caregivers too. That's a huge part of this uh, evening as well, and we'll get more to that in a second. Um, this is the official vision. Um, you guys, I'm not going to insult your reading skills, but as you can see, this is incredibly important to Tim and all of their team. Uh, we were talking about the ages earlier um, with Susan back there, and um, the minimum age is 14. There is no max age, which is awesome, and we, we did have a range last year from, I, I told her we snuck one in about two weeks before her 14th birthday. And um, we went all the way up into their 70s. We had a, sis a trio of sisters here who were all in their 70s, and it was, it was amazing. Um, so what is it? It's an unforgettable night, prom night experience. Um, like I said, just centered on God's love. That's the primary message. We want to shower them with love. Um, it is held every year the Friday before Valentine's Day, so mark your calendars now. <laughs> Uh, this will be an experience you'll want to repeat, I think, as we've seen here, too. Our, our group last night was heavier the other way. We had more repeats then. But um, honestly, it's one of my absolute most favorite days and nights of the entire year. It is just, I had never experienced anything like it before. And just a little bit, um, to l tell you a little bit about where I'm coming from, too. This is um, when, 
when uh, Jordan and Meredith brought this to us, um, we were excited about it and all that. It, it really touched a special place in my heart because I feel that God has always put a special place in my heart for those with special needs. In my former life, as I call it, I was a speech language pathologist and uh, did that for several years. And then God gave us um, our son who also has special needs. He's on the spectrum and has uh, different learning disabilities and he's on the autism spectrum, I should say. And um, so we kind of come to this, our family kind of comes to this from even a, a, um, a different perspective too. And it means the world to know it touches my heart. <laughs> it means the world to know that folks like you care enough to come out and make this special event, uh, like I said, for folks who are often overlooked and, and sometimes mistreated. Our son will be there, just FYI. He's not gonna, he, it's not his thing to be dancing and all the noise and all that, um, but he signed up just, like, not, just last night online, so he's going to be part of the team here as well, so we're excited about that. Um, a little bit about the event, especially since we have um, those who have never come before, and we're going to get into detail on all of this in a minute, I promise. But the basics of it is when they come, they are, they, they come in and they'll check in and they get the royal treatment from head to toe is what we like to say. They are each going to be crowned. We will have some type of royalty here to be able to crown them. Um, they will receive um, touch-ups on hair and makeup and shoe shine, and they will receive a corsage or a boutonniere. Um, it's all these things along the way. They will have their portrait made. They will take it with them that night. Lord willing, <laughs> that's our goal. Um, they will have the dancing. They'll have the karaoke. They'll have the food. And we also want to take care of the caregivers, too. So we'll touch on all of that more in just a minute. But that's kind of an overview of the night. They literally will have a red carpet experience uh, with paparazzi, a friendly paparazzi, <laughs> uh, better than what we usually hear of. So we want each of these people, very special people, to um, know that they are loved and that they, it's their night. It's all about them. Last year, Night to Shine had 375 churches, 50 states, 11 countries, 22 denominations, 150,000 volunteers, 75,000 honored guests, and one incredible night, as you can see there. Here at West Ark, we had about 150 kings and queens and approximately 300 uh, volunteers. This year already, with less than three weeks to go, we have topped almost talked about those numbers. We've topped it for kings and queens, and we're just shy of 300. I just checked it while ago before I came over. Um, so it's going to be bigger. <laughs> it's going to be bigger this year, which was the plan, um, and we are excited about that. All right, we're getting down to the nitty-gritty now, okay? And please, please think about your questions. We will have a Q&A session at the end of all of this, um, so, and I'm sure whatever question you have, others will have it too, so we'll get to that in just a little bit. We do ask that all volunteers arrive between 4.30 and 5.30. We are expecting anywhere between 400 and 600 volunteers. So to check them in and get them in place in an hour is a challenge. <laughs> we are up to it. We can do it. And we hopefully have a plan in place that will help with that. But it's really important for you guys to come when we need you to come um, to be able to do that because we want everyone in place so that we will be ready for our kings and queens. When you come in, you're going to come in the same door you just did, the main door here, and um, we'll talk the non-buddy. How many buddies do I have in here? The two sound at your first choice is buddy. Excellent. Thank you. Um, so I'm not talking to you right now, though. <laughs> those who are not buddies, um, everyone will check into this first room that you see um, as you come to the building on the right. It's room 106. You won't care about that that night, though. But we're going to have all of the non-buddy volunteers check in there. And that essentially means you're going to get your name tag, you're going to get your lanyard, you're going to get some information that will hopefully help you throughout the night. And you'll get direction and a map to guide you to where you need to go within the campus. Um, we'll get to where the buddies um, will go in just a little bit. Um, and then, like I said, your team leader, once you get there, may have more specific instructions. We have set it up to where each team leader can email their team, and we will send out, um, hopefully this next week, where we have placed everyone so far so that you can know that information as well. I think almost without exception, we were able to go first choice um, with just everyone so far. You know, as time goes on, we won't be able to do that as much. But um, obviously, if you're buddy, that's all you're doing all night, and that's really important because you were the ones who were with those kings and queens all night long. So, 
Volunteer parking. Um, the basics of it are we want you to park as far away <laughs> as you possibly can. We will have some um, courtesy vehicles, especially if it's a really, really cold night, which who knows? We've had, what, difference of 60 degrees nearly just this week. But um, we just ask that you park as far away as possible just to have that closer parking for our guests and their caregivers because some of them will have mobility issues and we want to make that just as easy as we possibly can for them. It is a possibility, which we talked about last night, that UFIS will allow us to use some of their parking um, that they don't normally use at that time. We will let you know about that in future emails if that happens, okay? All right, um, this event is, re is available only to registered volunteers and to participants. And the reason we do that is not to be exclusive, it's to protect um, mostly our kings and queens. Uh, because of special needs, sometimes they can be more vulnerable. And we, don't, we want to do our uttermost best to keep them in a safe and fun environment. Oh, register. Yeah, we just need everybody to register. And if you are here, I think some of you guys are registering out there. We very much appreciate that. If you know of people who plan to be here and be involved but have not registered, I'm begging you to beg them <laughs> to please go ahead and do that. Because not only does that help us administratively, but it help, we have people ask, where do you need people most? We can't really an answer that question well if we don't have that data. Um, we provide a way to do that with the um, website that you see right there, westark.org slash check. It will be of no cost to you, but we do ask that ever and insist that every volunteer have a background check. Everyone over 18, um, 18 and over, we need those, uh, again, to keep that safe environment. And honestly, a little note on that, because some people, if you've never been involved with that, it's like, that's crazy, that's going a little bit over. But the protection is not just for the people we're serving, it's for you too. Um, so just keep that in mind as well. We ask that when it's time to leave, I need to switch. How's this? We're good? We, we've lost our percussion now, apparently. <laughs> but one more minute. Sorry about that. Very much a right-handed person, so. Okay. Um, we do ask when you get to your team and you have been working with your team all night that you just please stay around. Um, and not check in with your team leader before you leave because we never know what may be needed within your team uh, before you leave. And actually this year, uh, we'll talk a little bit more about this later too, but we are planning on everyone coming back into the auditorium uh, for our final message from Tim Tebow. And then we're also hoping that that will help in the process of getting the kings and queens everything they need, getting them connected back with their caregiver for one thing, and then also to get them their gift bags, their coats, all of that. So you'll hear more about that later, but just know that there were all, everyone involved is planning on coming back to the auditorium. Uh, emergency and exit plans. Um, we have an amazing security team that will be involved here along with um, other uh, law enforcement personnel. So if we ask that you make yourself familiar with the exits that are all lit throughout the building as you go along, but we will look to that fairly expansive team to get us through any emergencies. So we don't have to come up with our own plan with that. They have it, and we are very grateful for that. We do ask before you arrive that you go ahead and eat. Um, the food that we will have here will be for our guests and for their caregivers. Uh, so we do, and plus you're gonna be busy. <laughs> so we just ask that you do that, and um, also always along the way to please pray for this event. Prayers are, are what um, makes anything in my book, and uh, to be able to um, lift that up to the Father. So, as you can tell, it takes quite a few people, and these are just the, the listing of the teams um, that it takes to put on this event, and we, you guys make that happen, so we are very grateful. What we want to do now is to take you through each team, put a face with their team leader, um, 
and that way when you get here that night, you can, you can know you're in the right place with the right people. Oh, oh. Yeah, okay, so our check-in and registration team, we have Rochelle Pratt on top and Rindy Edwards down at the bottom. And basically their, their objective is to warmly greet the guests and the volunteers to make sure they get all checked in, to answer any questions, and to make sure we keep everything moving so that we can let, let the guests experience what we need them to experience, what we want them to experience. Um, and that, that process is essentially the same for the volunteers and the um, guests. Our secu security team is headed up by Patrick Pruitt. Like I said, we have a security team always here at West Ark, and a good number of them, uh, of those men and women, will be a part of that team, in addition to um, some law enforcement uh, who will be here as well. Um, and they just basically, they will assist any, any uh, guests who might need help out in the parking lot. It goes to coat check. It goes through, you know, they're going to be roaming around the building a lot too. Um, so we are very grateful for these guys. They do an amazing job. And let us take that worry off of all of, all of you and all of us. So we are very grateful for them. Linda Davis is our food prep and service team. Um, basically, they will assist the caterer in getting all the food into the building and set up. And then, of course, we want our guests, especially our kings and queens, to be able to... Um, mobility is an issue a lot of the time, so we'll have people go into tables. Do you need any more to drink? Do you need any more of this or whatever? You know, just to serve them in that way. Um, we also will have... Our gym has a track around it. And um, we found out last year that that's where a majority of caregivers ended up because it was a nice bird's eye view to everything going on down on the dance floor. Um, so we're going with that. We're running with it this, week, this year. And we will have uh, ta tables all around the track with chairs. And they're making that very special for them too. They also will have another caregiver room. Um, I think they're planning still to have a, a masseuse and different special things like that because Caregivers have an, a very interesting 24-7 job. It never stops. And we want to honor and um, serve them in any way we can as well. Sometimes that means, especially if you're on that team, uh, the caregiver team, um, sometimes they just need to talk. You know, Oftentimes their days are so full of therapies and um, this and that and the other that they just sometimes need to talk. We're not asking anyone to be a counselor, but just to listen. And oftentimes that's a very useful thing for them as well. I think I did all that. Caleb Rudder, who handed me my new mic while ago, thank you very much, um, is in charge of our photo, photo, photography, videography, social media. He's the guy who's trying to get out the word and also to um, give us all something to help remember this evening by. So we are very grateful for him, and that includes our, our portraits that we'll have out here. It includes the um, David Berger is heading up the candid section of that because some of those are some of our fave pictures of the event or all those you know unexpected moments that are caught. So we are very grateful for all these guys. Kim and Josh Bice at the top there are taking over our um, or they're heading our care te caregiver team. <laughs> Ugh, I can't get through this. I know I can. Um, and essentially, we just want them to love on those parents and caregivers. Uh, some of our kings and queens will come with their parents. Some of those parents will want to stay with their king and queen, which is great. Some of them will not want a buddy for them. Some of them will. You know, we're trying to honor whatever their request is, whatever is best for their family. But if they do go upstairs to the caregiver section, um, we want to just love on them. We just want to say, we know this can be challenging sometimes, and we care. That's the bottom line. We may not understand it completely, but we care, and we want you to know that God does too. So, The floral team is headed up by Karen Pointer, and essentially they are um, taking care. We have a fabulous vendor, uh, a local business, who's donating every single one of the corsages and boutonnieres um, for our guests, and so those will all be available. Um, they love... What we have found out is the sparklier the better, <laughs> especially for our queens. And they do a wonderful job of just um, and making something really special for them. So they will be in, the floral team will be in charge of um, getting those to each of the kings and queens. And as I spoke about earlier, we will have royalty here to, um, to uh, I guess the crowns and tiaras kind of go in with floral as well. So uh, we'll have the royalty here to get them um, crowned for the evening as well. Uh, I already talked about me and Jordan and, and um, 
Meredith, and we're just going to, we're calling ourselves floaters, because that's what we do, except it's more like sprinters sometimes, but <laughs> we're grateful for the steps we get that night, so it works, it uh, gives me my steps for about two weeks, I think, which is great, it's not saying a whole lot either, by the way, but anyway, we just, you'll see us, we'll have our t-shirts on, we want to do whatever we can to make your job as easy as it possibly can be, that's our main objective. Our hair and makeup team is headed by Lindsay Allen. Uh, she's a local uh, stylist here, and um, they have an incredible group. I think nearly 30 people already have signed up for that, for that crew, and that ends up being a really special time that they get really, our ladies especially, they get just really pampered in that. And along with that, we have the shoe shine team, headed by Dave Cogswell, who also, you know, we, I think they shined anything from your normal black patent shoes to cowboy boots to tennis shoes, you know, and I think some of the ladies even got into that action too, which is great. Again, the objective is just to pamper them, to show them God's love in any way we possibly can, and to serve them, because honestly, oftentimes the population doesn't get that either. You know, they are often ignored or, um, yeah, they don't get that opportunity very often. <laughs> this is my favorite picture. Are they even here today? Oh, I think we got by with it. Okay, cool. Um, this is Cade and Rachel Richards. They are, uh, Cade is one of our campus ministers here, but they are going to be over our uh, red carpet and paparazzi team. So they will be introducing each and every king and queen as they get off the limo. Um, and we'll go through all that process here in a minute. They will, we will have paparazzi there just cheering them on and, and, uh, and uh, taking photographs and all of that. Last year we had one of our local radio stations here doing pseudo interviews of our kings and queens as they're coming off the red carpet. So again, whatever we can do, uh, bubbles, bubbles were a big hit last year. We had that, you know, and if they want to walk that red carpet 16 times that night and that's what they want to do, we're going to do our best to do it. So um, the karaoke team, this is, I want to introduce you to our karaoke elder here at West Dark. <laughs> that's his official title now, I think, because he's had this role several times. He does an awesome job, he and his team, of just making a fun, fun environment. And it is a really happening place, usually, uh, because the kings and queens love to get up and just sing their hearts out and just have a great time. And they do an amazing uh, job with all of that. Mandy Chilton is head of our sensory room. Oftentimes, uh, so those with special needs will have some issues with noise or too many people or lights or you name it, you know, it can just be too much. And so we need a place where they can come and just kind of chill out for a little bit. And Mandy and her team, uh, she is actually a um, physical therapist and she has a team of people who will be coming with her who are trained in this. Um, uh, we have some other volunteers who will be in there as well, but they are so good at knowing, at recognizing, first of all, when the, you know, because some of them will be roaming, uh, recognizing when, they, when someone might need a, a little time to chill out. Um, and just um, get into a calmer environment. Um, and then they have all sorts of things in there that really made a lot of us want to go in there too, but it is for our guests, so I'm going to encourage you to stay away. Um, but they do a really good job with that, and we're grateful to be able to offer that to our guests. Um, Todd Harris is the, te is the t team leader of our medical team. He is a firefighter. He's also an EMT. And he, um, just last night, or sometime yesterday, I think, uh, told us that we had secured an ambulance again this year to just be on site if needed. Uh, but for more of the more minor things, we'll have Todd and his team here um, available. And again, they'll be roaming. We'll have a station for them that we'll put on your map. But um, we also just needed someone around, you know, for those more minor things that may happen. Kim Lou Allen is in charge of our buddies. Um, buddies, every team is important. <laughs> buddies are the ones who go around with each of the kings and queens every minute that they're there and make sure that they experience, they have the best experience that they can. So no pressure, no. But it's also, to me, if I were choosing a job, that's definitely what I would want to do if I weren't doing what I'm doing. Um, but it is a really important one, and so we are grateful that Kim will be here answering your questions, getting buddies and, and kings and queens attached to each other and connected, um, and to offer assistance however we can. Um, the teardown team, look at your person to your right and left, because we're all part of that team. 
We need, as it takes days to set this up. Our decorations team and others will be working to get all that set up. And last year, with everybody pitching in, I believe we were in and out of here within two hours, um, which is pretty amazing considering how many spaces were affected and, and all of that. So we just ask that everybody pitch in. We'll do our best to direct you and not have a lot of wandering around, but um, we'd appreciate whoever can um, help us out with that. Okay, I want to specifically talk to the buddies right now um, because, like I said, it is a very important job. You're the ones who's going to be with our um, guests every moment of the night. And so we just wanted to give you some information and um, hopefully make that job easier for you. We do ask that you never leave your king or queen. Now, we understand there are exceptions. You might need to go to the restroom and such. You might need to go uh, get help of some sort. So what we ask you to do is just to pair up with another buddy if something like that happens and say, hey, I need to go do such and such. I'll do my best to be back in however long. Can you please just hang with my uh, king or queen for a little bit? So um, we don't expect you to do anything. Um, out of, we know things will happen, but so that's how we ask that you um, take care of that. If you or your king or buddy have any medical issues at all, uh, during the evening, we ask that you seek out a medical team member. Again, we'll have it marked, and some will be manned in their station uh, downstairs, but um, we just ask if you don't see one of them, find one of us, uh, or, or try any volunteer, and we'll get you there. Um, like I said earlier, as it begins to wrap up, we'll get out word that everybody needs to come back to the auditorium. We'll see our video from Tim, and we'll get everyone exited out and, and have what they need, um, all of their belongings with them. Um, I mentioned this before to you, but just know that sometimes as a buddy, they may have a caregiver who wants to stay with them throughout the night, and that's okay. I talked to someone just the other day, and um, I believe it was her son who is um, tube-fed, so he won't be eating that, ish that night, but sometimes he needs his inhaler. Sometimes he needs a sip of water. She's going to be able, she's, she wants to stay with him to be able to make sure that he's being able to enjoy everything as well. So we just want to honor whatever requests they have in that. Um, it is a good idea to ask your king or queen uh, several times throughout the evening if they need to go to the restroom. Uh, and those will be marked as well in the gym. They're right there in all of the action, and, and those of us will be around to direct you as well. But most of the time, uh, you'll be using those restrooms, I would think. But... We'll have all that marked for you on your map as well. Um, do you think that it's important for you to know that is, if your king or queen does have some severe disabilities especially, it's not your job to take care of that for them because that gets into territory that we don't need to get into. They need one of their caregivers to do that for them. Um, so again, come to one of us and we will track them down for you if that's needed. I don't remember that happening much at all last year. We're just trying to be prepared for whatever may happen, whatever questions you may have. So, We do encourage you to stay in touch with your king or queen after the event. I know several have done that. What's really important to remember about that, though, is please okay that with the caregiver. That's very important. It's just like if you have a minor child, and I mean, think of it that way. If you have a minor child, you don't want some stranger, or I wouldn't as a parent, want some stranger calling them or texting them if I don't know them at all. That would be scary to me. I would not like that a bit, and I would stop it quickly. <laughs> um, so we just ask that you have communication with the caregiver, make sure they're okay with it, maybe, you know, give the information to them to give to, you know, um, their child or the, the person that they take care of. Food tips. Um, we ask that you be very conscious of any food and dietary restrictions that your king or queen may have. Now, you may be thinking, well, how in the world am I going to do that? <laughs> Just about 15 minutes ago, we printed off the king and queen name tags that we have so far. So on the front, you'll have their name and an ID number. On the back side, in pretty small print, because some had a lot to say, um, there will be all sorts of information that we have gotten from them, including some fun facts, which I would encourage you to look at that as soon as you can, because that could be a kind of a... Um, a something for you to get into conversation with them. Icebreaker, I think is the term I'm looking for. Um, so we have the fun fact, we'll have their medical issues, we'll have their allergies, um, if they need food prepped in a different way, all of their mobility, sensory, 
all of that, we're doing our very, very best to get all of that on the back of their name tag. So I would encourage you, when you get connected with your king or queen, to look at that information. And especially if the caregiver is still there, to ask any questions you may have at that point. Because uh, again, we really need to honor that um, for medical reasons. We just said that. <laughs> uh, that's pretty much the same thing too. We, our, that's part of what our food service crew is doing too. We will get word to them of who needs food and some pureed, some need it, some need it cut up. We do our very best to have um, just finger foods anyway to make it easier for them. Uh, but I had just a couple this week, it's, it's, you just never know. Some, uh, there was one young man, I believe it was, who absolutely does not like forks. Okay, not a problem. We'll do our best not to have forks, you know, but that's good information to have, uh, should, that, should that come up. So, <clears throat> just a little bit about wheelchair and limited mobility tips. Um, really, a lot of this is just putting yourself in their shoes putting yourself in their place, seeing it from their perspective to see what you would like someone to do. So um, if someone's independent, you can see they're independent and using their chairs, it's always best just to let them do that as much as they want and can, but to always ask if you think that assistance will be needed to ask first. Just ask them, may I help you? I'd be delighted to do so. And, and sometimes they'll say yes and be grateful, and sometimes they want to do it themselves, and that's okay too. Um, but please don't start pushing, you know, without their permission, because that could be really, really disorienting and maybe even scary. Um, we're doing our best to work on the traffic flow that we had last year, um, but there may be some times that you have, especially I can see it over by karaoke, um, that it may be a little bit crowded in there. So just give yourself time. Uh, we don't have to be in a rush and, and allow yourself that time for transition. Um, if you do have someone who is... Um, in a chair or otherwise, you know, just again, ask, you know, may I take your arm? May I take your um, hand, you know, to help along or whatever. We just want to be conscious of that. Um, if you do have someone in a chair or other limited mobility, it's, if, and you're going to be in conversation for a little bit, it's always a good idea just to get down on their level, you know, just a, sort of a, um, a courtesy thing. Uh, we don't want to ever give the impression that we're talking down to them in any way, um, and we'll get to that a little bit too. This one's really near and dear to my heart. I can't even really explain it. It just really means a lot to me. Um, and I think it will to our guests and caregivers as well to use people first language. And really all that means is my son Adam is Adam and then everything else that makes up Adam, you know? So he is Adam. I wouldn't want someone to say, oh, that brown haired boy Adam, you know? No, he's Adam who happens to have brown hair, you know? or more particularly, that's um, Adam, um, the autistic Adam. Well, yeah, he has autism, but that's not everything about him. So the people first language just says, I'm Dina, and I have autism, or I am whatever. We just want to use that people first, and we'll give you um, specific examples of that. These are some terms that can be offensive. Um, you can read those, so I'm not going to go through every one of them. But is, we're not going to come zap you. We're not going to um, have some gong that pulls you out of the way. If you happen to say one, it's okay. But we're just kind of using this opportunity as a little bit of an education, you know, because, uh, again, this population oftentimes um, is perceived very differently than they really are, you know. We want to be able, part of the way we can show God's love to them is to get them to, kn to know them as people. That's how we want people to get to know us, you know, so to be able to see the person before we see the disability. Um, that's challenging. I'm not, I mean, if you see someone in a chair, that's challenging, you know, I get it. But these are just some things for us to keep in mind and to be um, as courteous and as kind to them as we know how to be. Uh, these are some of the other offensive phrases you can have. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, these are some of the specific examples. So instead of a disabled person, it's a person with disabilities. A uh, special needs person, a person with special needs. Uh, instead of a wheelchair bound, it's a person in a wheelchair. And you get the gist of it. Um, again, at, I, for whatever reason, have kind of a hang up about this, but I think it's just that it's, I want to be seen as a person first too, not necessarily for just specific traits of myself. And so we want to extend that courtesy to other people as well. This is from the Tim Tebow Foundation, by the way. I didn't write this, but I like it a lot. So, um, 
And as it says at the bottom, the key thing is just to remember to put the person first. They are not their disability. <clears throat> they are first and foremost a child of God and a person with feelings and emotions just like you. <clears throat> I apologize, I forgot my water. Okay, tips for communicating. When offering assistance, assistance to a person with disability, um, like we said before, ask, ask them if it's okay. It may be abundantly clear <laughs> that they need help, but let's just always ask still. That's just a common people, person to person uh, courtesy there. And ask how they, they best can. Now we do, we will have quite a few who have communication uh, issues. They have challenges within, within communication. Um, and we'll talk a little bit more about that as well. As much as you can, you wanna address them just as you would any other person. It's not a bad idea. We have asked them for their preferred name on their name tags, so that should help you out with that. Most of them, it's their first name. I know we have one whose name is really Barbara, I think, and she's Miss Bobby. So that's what she goes by, she's Miss Bobby. I was like, okay, we got it. Uh, so just, um, again, a courtesy thing of how you would wanna be treated. Um, this is pretty specific, but should you have someone with limited mobility in their arms, for instance, um, it's okay to go ahead and offer a handshake. Um, because you're still trying to treat them as any others. You don't want to automatically assume that they haven't figured out another way to do that. And it's really cool sometimes to see some of the accommodations that they've been able to come up with there on their own. Um, it's a good idea just not to alter your voice in any way, like, you know, speaking like you would to a small child. Um, we want to treat them as God's children, and we want to give them the utmost respect that we possibly can. So all of these are just tips to um, help us with that. Man, you guys are pampering me today. Thank you so much. <laughs> Excuse me. Okay. Um, we talked about the wheelchair. You don't want to push it. You don't want to um, do anything to it, lean on it. I, you ask my kids, it's a big pet peeve for someone to be leaning on my chair, so I'm guessing some of these folks might not like that either. Um, so again, common courtesy. Service animals, I don't think we had any last year, but should any show up, they are really important to their owners. And so they have been through extensive training, uh, but they are, they are oftentimes their best friends to their owners. And so please ask them, you know, before any inter interaction or any touching of their animal, um, again, just to respect them and the animal. Um, Oh, if you have someone with a visual disability, it's a good idea just to kind of give them the lay of the land, you know, don't sneak up um, uh, on them or, um, you know, give, give them more information than you think they might need just to be able to kind of paint that picture for them since they're not being able to see it. Um, patience is always a good thing. I need a lot of it with people in my life, so I mean, they need to offer it. Oh, I'm saying that the wrong way. I know people who interact with me have to have a lot of patience, so we're just asking all of us to extend that patience to, uh, to uh, it, you know, we're gonna do our best not to get frustrated. If you feel yourself doing that, it's okay. We have people who can come in and help. Again, I don't think that happened at all last year. Everybody um, was able to do what they needed to do, but just ask for help if you feel yourself going that direction. Um, if you find yourself in an uncomfortable situation of any kind, again, we're gonna ask that you ask for help. One of the biggest things, um, well, I guess we're getting, did I already talk about not ever being alone with someone? Okay, I guess we're getting to that in a second. <laughs> um, we talked about the sensory room earlier. Some of the signs that you might see as someone who might need to go to that sensory room are excessive yelling, screaming, uh, being fidgety, just, you know, out, even with your limited time with that person, something that you think might be out of the ordinary, it's not a bad idea just to kind of back off, maybe get away from the action, try to ask them, you know, how you might be able to help, and if that doesn't work, then go ahead to the sensory room. Again, I don't remember many times at all. We were shocked, actually, how few people came to the sensory room last year. Um, I have issues with the noise and all that myself, but, we were shocked by that, but it is available um, for those who might need it. Um, speak kindly, you can maintain your composure. Here it is. We ask that no one ever go off alone with a guest. There's no need, there's nothing that needs to happen in the night that that should happen. And again, that's for the protection of the kings and queens. That's also for the protection of you. 
uh, if you know something is accused later. So there's no need at all to do. There are going to be enough people around um, for that not to be a, an issue. So we just ask that you be conscious of that to not put yourself in that scenario and or your king or queen. Um, uh, well, let me back up to that one. Yeah. Um, Technically, you know, you're a friend. The buddies are a friend for the evening, and all of us are friends for the evening. The buddies especially often, oftentimes can be viewed as dates, which you are, technically. We want to be very clear in any way, shape, or form we can do it that, we, that we're friends. We are friends, and we're not anything else. We don't want to be unkind about that, but it needs to be really clear. Because, um, you know, when you have limited understanding of certain situations, especially social situations, that can be an issue. Um, one of the ways, and I think we'll talk about this a little bit in, the, in a little bit too, but um, one of the ways to do that is how we dress. And we'll, we'll talk about who's going to be wearing what. Uh, but especially, ladies, I know it's tough to find, especially formal wear, uh, if you choose to do that, that is modest. But we don't want to send any message to anyone, but especially our guests, of anything we don't intend to send, any message we don't intend to send. Um, okay, we encourage, um, especially the night of, if you get here early enough to get through registration, just walk through from your map, uh, walk through the different spaces. We have tried once again to have everything, we're going to have a lot in this space right here, and we'll go through that in just a minute, um, but just familiarize yourself as much as possible, especially the buddies, that's a good idea. Um, comfortable shoes. Always a good idea in my book, no matter what the occasion, but uh, that's not a bad idea because you're going to be putting in some steps. Um, we already talked about that. Yeah, and again, especially even if you're not with a buddy or whatever, there's really no reason to be in any other part of the building. We're all in this together. We're all on the same team. So if you are through with your job, which rarely happens, then find someone and we'll, we'll be sure to put you to work. That, that should not be a problem. Don't, ask, don't be afraid to ask for help. Um, we've already kind of talked about that. Um, okay, dress. I know this comes up um, every year too. If you are a buddy, we ask that you dress as a king or queen's date. And that can be, honestly, I promise. It was anything last year from, for the ladies, uh, pantsuits or just, you know, slacks and a nice shirt. And they went all the way to formal wear, full ball gowns, you know, whatever. For the gentlemen, it was everything from slacks and a, a button-down or even a pullover to tuxes. I mean, it truly is everything on that spectrum. We do not want the lack of what you feel is appropriate clothing to be uh, an issue for anyone. So please just take that one off the table. If It'll be okay. We promise it will be okay because the kings and queens come in all uh, you know, they're all over the spectrum to you as far as what they're wearing. Again, anything from jeans to a tux. So um, just keep that in mind. Those are for the buddies. For everyone else, we're going to ask that you wear either a Night to Shine t-shirt, which we'll talk about in a minute too, or especially for the food service staff, they wear the um, black slacks and white shirt like you see in food staffs um, most of the time. Um, so that will be, that'll cover pretty much all of us there, I think. And always remember your smile. Okay, in case of emergency, we talked about this a little bit, but just make yourself familiar with all of the lit exits around, and our emergency teams will take care of it should any emergency arise. That has not happened yet. We are grateful for that. But they are trained, and they know what to do, and will direct us to do so too in any, um, any emergency. Oh, yes, this is important. Um, no one on the Night to Shine staff, it, and that means all of us here, um, is to give any medication to any king or queen. I don't care if it's baby aspirin. <laughs> We're not doing it because we have no idea what their medical history is, and oftentimes it's very involved. So if they say anything about that, oh, I need my whatever, that takes us straight to the caregiver. That's why they're there. And if their caregiver happened not to stay, then we're on the phone uh, determining what we need to do. But we will not administer any medications um, at all without that permission. OK, a little bit of the lay of the land. Um, obviously, on the right, you're seeing just the bird's eye view of our campus here. 
Uh, one thing I wanted to point out, well, oh, can I do this today? Uh-oh. What's that? I saw it for, oh, there we go, there we go. Okay, um, here's our parking lot. We're gonna ask that everybody park, as many people as possible park as far back here, and we are hopeful to get some of this parking available as well. Um, but we're gonna ask when you come in, and we will have some shuttle cars um, to help you back to the entrance. Everybody's coming in here first. Um, I'm gonna go through some of these basics of the um, spaces, and then especially those who are buddies, I'm gonna give you some information for in here, because that's where you're gonna be a good portion of the time. Um, but here is the room, let's see, here's our main entrance. This is the room where everyone who is pre-registered, which is you guys, I hope, everyone who's pre-registered will come in here and you'll do your, we're gonna do it as fast as possible, quick check-in to get you in here, and then you will exit out this door of that room to go on to wherever you need to go. Uh, if someone is not registered, they will check in in the foyer area here. We will have a coat check room that will be available to both our guests and to our um, volunteers. We do ask, it was brought up last night, that if you're comfortable in leaving some of, or all of your possessions locked up in your car, especially a trunk or something like that, we'd ask you to do that because if we do end up with 500 uh, coats or whatever, <laughs> that's gonna be a challenge. Um, we will have security all along there, but um, if you're comfortable with that and can do that, that would be great as well. Um, we will have security in the parking lot just roaming as well too, by the way. Um, let's see, what did I not cover? Coat checks right there. This is the in these are the entrances to the auditorium. We're right here right now. Uh, karaoke is going to be back here, so it's this back exit. We'll take you back to karaoke. Again, we'll talk more about that in just a minute. The only thing that is upstairs this year is for the caregivers. So we have the caregiver room right here. Um, right near the stairs, and then the rest, you know, they'll be around the track um, upstairs overlooking the gym. Uh, the red carpet, uh, we will have at least two limos, I believe three going this year. That was one of the things we learned. Um, so the gentlemen will come out, for, as a rule, the gentlemen will come out here to their limos. That is this um, ramp right here, the concrete ramp right here. And then the ladies will come through right here and their limo will, will get them. They are just gonna go tour our parking lot in that limo, which apparently was a lot of fun in and of itself. And then they will go for their red carpet experience, which will take them to the gym. Okay, clear as mud, right? <laughs> All right, this is for the buddies. And we are hopeful. Can you advance me? I think it stopped working. <laughs> there we go. We are hopeful, we did have some traffic issues last year, inside, not outside. Um, we are hopeful that this will help considerably. We have a lot of square footage in here that we knew needed to be used, but I think we finally figured out how to do that, hopefully. So if you are a buddy, you're gonna follow this green and you literally will come right in here and your check-in will be right down here. The reason we wanna do that is because eventually the queens or the kings will be checking in here the queens will be checking over here, and you are nice and handy to be able to get connected with your buddy that way, okay? So, as you can see, when our queens come in, they're gonna come with their caregivers, and they're gonna get checked in right here, and then, as, then you will be connected. We'll just be pulling buddies to connect with them as we need them, and then they will start their, their trek on all these different things that we have planned for them. So it'll be hair and makeup, it'll be floral and a crown, it will be photoed there in the back, and then they will have a choice then if you want to go down the hall down here to the limo, and we'll have signs, we'll have signage all over for this too. But they can go to the limo, they can go to karaoke right there, or they can go to the gym for dinner and dancing, okay? So, um, and we're hopeful that in and of itself will help with the tra some of the traffic issues we had. Same thing on the other side for the kings. They will come here, they will check in, they will have shoe shine, they'll have boutonniere, they'll have crown, they'll have photo, and then they have the choice to go down the ramp and get on their limo, or to go to karaoke, or to go to the gym. Clear as mud again, right? By the way, I feel the need to say that I had some, I thought, pretty good animations with this, but PowerPoint didn't want to cooperate, so here we go. But it works, hopefully, for you, so. Okay. Night to Shine t-shirts. We have made the decision that we're gonna have our own 
Fort Smith Night to Shine t-shirts this year. We kind of surveyed the crowd last year. Who would be, of, and just raise a hand, who would that be of interest to? It'd be, what do we decide, nine or ten? Ten. Um, ten dollars each. Um, we will get information out to you um, when, those, when we have the form ready for those. Ten dollars each, it will have the night, a version of the Night to Shine logo on the front. And then on the back, it will say volunteer, and it will have the West Ark logo. Um, that makes it easy for you to know what to wear that night if you do that, for one thing. And then we did have that request a lot last year um, for um, those who were working the event. We're going to make them undated, too. We're not going to put a number on there, so, I mean, a year on there, so that if you um, want to use it again and again in years to come, that won't be an issue. So, um, but we will get the information out. We're still working on the forum to get that out to you guys, and um, you can order them order them online even and take care of your payment there even if you want to. Uh, one thing I think I failed to mention, um, on each, both volunteers and the kings and queens name tags, they will have an ID number. And that ID number will be used for coat check and whatever else, it will be used for photos um, and whatever else we can think of. So it'll be on the front and the back of most uh, name tags. There were a few that we had a lot of information to put on the back of that name tag for the king or queen, uh, but it will definitely be on the front. So just keep that in mind too that that number may come up in different places and um, be aware of that. All right. I think I covered all of this that we intended to cover. What questions?